Okay, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me. Um, so today I, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, these uh, two uh, small programs. But, uh, more conceptually, it is uh, about uh, making uh, workflow processing on, on large-scale machines, whether it's a cluster or supercomputers, or some multiple combination of these uh, resources, uh, as simple as uh, simple and uh, trivial as possible. So specifically, uh, I, I'm going to talk about uh, two um, related but uh, still uh, independently useful tools uh, called GXP and GMAP. So GXP is a, a power shell and workflow system. And uh, GMAP uh, is a, a power file system. So uh, GXP uh, workflow is uh, specifically uh, based on uh, the Unix make, as you know. So I'm very uh, delighted to learn that the real uh, biologist uh, are happy uh, adapting himself to uh, make one. Um, so I am uh, talking uh, on behalf of uh, my entire team, but uh, uh, in, in particular, uh, the second part of this talk, uh, GMAM, uh, is uh, main, mainly done by my uh, student, Nan Dong, uh, who is finishing, uh, hopefully finishing his uh, PhD thesis uh, this, this month. So uh, I don't have uh, much, uh, actually, uh, background in biology, but uh, when we look at the entire uh, field of science, so it is not only biology and genomics uh, in which uh, field scientists are sort of uh, overwhelmed by lots of data. So there are so many other scientific fields like astronomy and high energy physics and environmental science uh, in which people are uh, fighting with uh, lots of lots of uh, data generated by uh, many sources. <coughs> And, and so the, uh, so the, the term, term uh, called uh, the fourth paradigm is coined by uh, Jim Gray. And it is increasingly seen as uh, the next uh, scientific discipline which comes to uh, computational science, which is basically about simulation uh, as a new way of uh, conducting uh, science. So when we uh, look at uh, traditional simulation or computational science, uh, and they then this with computation uh, as a computational workflow. So they, they are very different. So in, in simulation of computational science, the, the program is typically a monolithic, a single uh, MPI program that runs on um, many, uh, many nodes. And the program is uh, typically uh, written by the uh, researcher himself because uh, they, they like to uh, verify uh, whatever uh, models they have. But uh, when we look at uh, data-intensive uh, computing like uh, genomics, um, that uh, uh, what you typically call program is no longer a single binary. So it's actually a, a composite of, of uh, many, many <coughs> kinds of programs, which are typically not uh, written by yourself. When we look at uh, how uh, nodes communicate, uh, so in simulation, uh, Compute nodes typically uh, directly uh, connect to each other uh, by uh, whatever uh, communication mechanism provided by the communication library like uh, MPI. And um, in, in the data intensive uh, computing, uh, tasks uh, actually typically communicate uh, somewhat indirectly uh, through uh, file systems or databases. So this is uh, partially because uh, these uh, individual components uh, written by somebody else uh, have no way to communicate uh, other than writing to uh, files or reading from files. <coughs> and communication uh, granularity, so in simulation it is uh, very fine grain and, and it is often very frequent. So uh, they, they need something like MPI to optimize uh, communication. But uh, fortunately data intensive science, even though uh, individual tasks may write lots of data or read uh, lots of data, they are typically uh, more coarse grained and uh, amenable to um, go to uh, file systems. And for load balancing, uh, simulation, uh, it, it is typically uh, hand-optimized and, and made static. Uh, because basically, otherwise, uh, there's no way to uh, scale. But uh, in, in data-intensive computing, um, so the, the load, workload of uh, individual tasks are uh, not known in advance. Um, partially, so one reason for that is, uh, again, uh, these programs are written by somebody else, but uh, more fundamentally, the, the workload uh, 
is highly sensitive to the input data, so there's, there's no way to uh, predict in, in advance uh, how, how long the computation uh, will finish. So, so dynamic load balancing and uh, load balancing supported by the system uh, is very, very important in, in data intensive uh, computing workloads. So, <coughs> so, to summarize uh, what, what are needed uh, for data intensive computation, so what means, uh, we, we need a very high productive uh, tools to uh, do lots of uh, trials and uh, errors uh, by combining uh, many, many uh, external programs in various ways. So uh, first of all, we need a really concise way to describe uh, workflows. And, and, and the, the user needs to have an uh, efficient way to diagnose uh, errors and faults. And we, we should note that, uh, so faults are of course uh, normal, but uh, most of the time the, the error uh, you got uh, is due to your errors, and your, your errors, not system errors. And, but in, in the beginning, you don't actually know uh, which are actually uh, happening. So, diagnosing these uh, uh, whatever uh, errors you see uh, is very important. And uh, of course, uh, the, the, the system uh, should be uh, able to be installed very uh, quickly. So, we should never uh, overwhelm by uh, users. And portability. Um, Smooth, uh, smooth expansion from uh, small systems to larger systems, and um, seamless integration of uh, multiple uh, such kind of systems is, uh, is uh, very important. So portability not only means portability across different uh, operating <coughs> systems, but um, in, in parallel computing environment, uh, in individual uh, sites or clusters may uh, use uh, different uh, conventions or constraints uh, about how resources can be acquired. So, so desktop is of course your resource, so, so there's nothing complicated, but uh, from uh, laboratory clusters, uh, you uh, typically access uh, nodes via SSH. But uh, for larger systems um, that are shared by uh, people who don't know each other, uh, they need to uh, use some sort of uh, resource uh, scheduler, like a uh, circuit engine or Honda. So, that the system uh, needs to support uh, all this and make, make uh, the difference between these uh, systems uh, transparent to, to the uh, end user. This way, uh, we need to uh, uh, show a clear path from, uh, uh, from small systems, uh, single clusters, or bigger systems like supercomputers, multiple clusters, and uh, scrap in this case. Uh, it, this is uh, uh, this is particularly important because uh, nobody wants to um, start from supercomputers in the beginning. So everybody uh, likes to start with small systems like the desktop and, and uh, gradually move to larger systems when the need arises. So that the system uh, does not uh, prohibit users, uh, 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 users from using large scale systems because uh, it's not supported on uh, large scale systems. Um, of course, uh, the system uh, must uh, perform well, uh, especially on large, large scale systems like the supercomputers. So, um, our approach uh, basically uh, consists of uh, two or perhaps three uh, components. So, the, at the bottom level, we, we have a small system called GXP uh, parallel shell, which is basically about uh, remotely executing uh, many uh, processes quickly uh, in, in parallel. But, uh, so there, there are so many other similar tools, but uh, this one is uh, specifically designed to uh, be able to uh, use uh, multiple kinds of resources uh, at the same time. So, of course, uh, so for example, you can, you can use your lab clusters, uh, desktops, and some supercomputers uh, at, at the same time. And, and built on top of it, it is uh, something called GXP make, which is uh, make uh, workflow systems uh, based on make. Um, so it, it's a uh, parallel workflow uh, based on the Unix make, uh, as you know it. So uh, this, this is a specific design <coughs> for uh, guaranteeing almost 100% compatibility with uh, GNU makes. It is not a uh, GNU, uh, GNU uh, no, sorry, uh, it is not a make clone, but uh, it, it, it's a make, uh, as you know it. So, so this is a, a practically important difference. Uh, from uh, other 
Uh, so, <laughs> so, so, so there must be uh, something uh, that uh, I tweak uh, it, it, so that uh, it can uh, distribute the tasks to uh, distributed uh, other nodes. So, in, in theory, so I, I change a little bit uh, environment. So, so in, in a very rare cases, in fact, the, the, the workflow that the user has given uh, is sensitive to the change in environment. So, GMount is a user-level parallel file system, uh, which is, uh, unlike the traditional file, uh, notion of parallel file systems, it is uh, actually not uh, managing uh, data you, uh, by, your, by itself, but it is simply groups existing uh, uh, file systems together so that uh, it, uh, it looks like a global uh, file system across nodes or uh, maybe uh, across uh, clusters. So, uh, one thing, uh, so something uh, common uh, among uh, all these systems uh, are the following. So, one is uh, they uh, work uh, across uh, multiple administrative uh, domains. So, this is not something that uh, should be installed uh, uh, in a single system, uh, perhaps by administrators that provide it to the user. So, it, it, it's but uh, it instead. Uh, very small tools that can be installed by individual users and uh, can be used uh, across uh, multiple systems. And, and, uh, and the second uh, criteria is uh, it shouldn't uh, overlook uh, some uh, ugly issues uh, that uh, arise in uh, real uh, distributed systems, like um, there may be firewalls, um, there may be uh, network address translation. Um, it is very typical that uh, some uh, nodes, like uh, compute nodes of supercomputers, can be uh, accessed only from a uh, gateway of, of the computer cluster, not, not directly from outside the cluster. So, so this, uh, there are so many things. Uh, there are so many things <coughs> uh, that uh, do not uh, allow uh, allow you to communicate linearly uh, from one uh, system to another. So. The system uh, must overcome these issues. And finally, so uh, they, they must be kept uh, very simple and lightweight, so that uh, users never uh, users are never overwhelmed by uh, installation headaches. So here's uh, the rest of my talk. Um, first uh, about uh, GXP. <coughs> so uh, like I said, uh, it, it is basically a parallel shell. So so the, the end result you like to have uh, is something like this. So you say um, GXPC is, which stands for execute, and, and give it a whatever command line if you want to uh, execute. So this single line uh, runs uh, this same command on all the uh, resources you acquire. <coughs> but how to acquire resources? So, so before executing uh, this final command, you need to uh, acquire resources by uh, something I, I call GXPC Explore. But by giving uh, basically no no names you like to grab, uh, this one uh, actually issues uh, appropriate uh, resource acquisition commands like uh, SSH or QSAR uh, or whatever uh, it is uh, appropriate in your system uh, in, in order to uh, acquire uh, actually acquire these resources. For example, uh, this one. <coughs> tries to reach uh, uh, a host called Homologin and uh, 10 of uh, nodes uh, in, in, that, in that class. But uh, before this, uh, you need to tell GXP uh, what is the appropriate way to uh, reach particular host. So this is uh, where uh, GXP use uh, uh, must be used for. So ac actually, so chronologically, this is the first uh, thing you need to do. Uh, this command actually tells GXP how to uh, how it can reach a particular node. For example, uh, this one <coughs> says uh, from the local host uh, to a uh, host called uh, Homo Login, uh, you can use SSH. And this one uh, says uh, from Homo Login uh, to node uh, whose name is actually not important, you can you can use Tor. 
similarly, so uh, a very frequently used idiom is uh, something like GXPC uses as its home, which basically says uh, from uh, any host whose uh, host name begins with Hongo, uh, you can reach uh, any host whose name begins with Hongo using uh, SSH. So by <coughs> combining these things, you can uh, actually tell GXP uh, how you can reach uh, particular uh, nodes. So what is uh, most important here is you can explicitly say that uh, in order to grab nodes of a particular cluster, you should be from uh, this particular node. So <coughs> this is uh, admittedly uh, more complex than uh, similar uh, parallel shared tools. It basically uh, allows you to say, I, I run this command on this and this and this host, which, which is uh, actually a single step. So this uh, three step is uh, admittedly more complex than that. But uh, this is uh, designed for the purpose of uh, accommodating uh, multiple types of resources, uh, SSH or TOG, and letting uh, the system uh, appropriately choose uh, what kind of underlying command should be used for reaching uh, particular resources. And another thing uh, that, that uh, another benefit of this design is uh, it, it uh, allows uh, the system to reach and connect nodes behind, behind some gateway. So which is not directly reachable from your uh, local desktop. So this is very typical in computer nodes uh, of supercomputers. Um, <coughs> I didn't mention this, but uh, it, it is uh, implemented uh, so that it uh, runs on, on very minimum uh, prerequisite software. So specifically, it only uh, so, so Python is the only tool that uh, needs to be there on all computers. And of course, you need to have some ways to uh, access to uh, computer nodes uh, near some uh, underlying tools, SSH, or whatever. And it really takes a single download plus uh, setting a path environment, uh, environment variable to, uh, for you to get started with this, uh, this tool. And you only need to install this uh, on a single node, so you, you don't have to even install on, uh, on computer nodes. So some other useful features are, <coughs> are the one uh, to select uh, the, the, the set of nodes uh, to run particular commands on. You can, you can flexibly set, like, uh, uh, you like to run this command only on compute nodes, or, or only on five servers or gateways, something like that. And some other uh, features that turn out to be very useful is uh, not only launching processes uh, in parallel, but also uh, with uh, connecting them uh, together, so that they can you can they can uh, communicate uh, very easily using a standard file descriptors of, of units. So this is uh, like a, a parallel analog of uh, Unix five. So you, you can you can write uh, communicating uh, processes uh, without uh, ever using sockets or MTIs or. Uh, and you can you can go and uh, download uh, and play with this to uh, from this URL uh, simply Google GXP. <coughs> so so I'm quickly uh, overviewing GXP. So what, what comes next is uh, GXP main. So it, it is uh, like I said um, yet another parallel on this main. But uh, like I said uh, it. Uh, intend to be almost completely uh, renewable compatible, so that uh, it, uh, you, you can you can uh, have a, uh, you can have a very good sense of uh, you can move from this uh, single node uh, parallel made system to uh, distributed system. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, implementation uh, does not modify renewable uh, at all. So 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 you actually do not have to. Uh, you even do not have to compile uh, modified when you make. So you can just use uh, when you make you have in your system. And it, it of course runs on uh, top of GXP, so it basically indicates uh, the ways I mentioned, like uh, being very lightweight and quick install, and being able to run uh, across multiple resources. So um, at this point, uh, let me show you a very quick uh, one-minute demo uh, of GXP and GXP Make. Uh, 
in order to show how everything I have so, so far talked about uh, actually looks like. So it, 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 it is a very simple demo that uh, begins from uh, installation, so from, from, uh, from the state where you don't have anything, uh, to uh, use Explorer E and finally uh, running uh, 1,000 jobs on um, 600 cores using technique. So this is the uh, beginning. So you, you uh, have only make files and uh, um, small config file and uh, stupid uh, tasks that do not anything useful. <coughs> and here's a, a simple make file that uh, actually generates a thousand jobs uh, with uh, these uh, five lines. So this is a parameter instantiation. Uh, dependencies and, and actually a template that uh, basically says for each job uh, you like to run this uh, stupid task. And <coughs> this is a small config file which is basically saying uh, each node uh, has a HCP use. So this is an installation that uh, literally takes only a, a download. And setting a path variable. So that's all you uh, really need to take uh, to get started. And, and here you uh, start with uh, JXPC use and then uh, explore. So these two steps actually uh, grab uh, many uh, nodes within this cluster <coughs> by using SSH. So so many nodes are actually uh, turned apart off due to uh, power saving. And you end up with having something like 65, uh, 75 nodes. And you actually uh, start running um, that stupid make files, uh, generating a uh, thousand uh, jobs already. And you can uh, check the status uh, of the workflow by seeing a simple uh, generated uh, HTML page. So, so you have something like 600 uh, concurrency. So this is basically the current profile. <coughs> and you see lots of other things. Uh, but among others, you can check uh, failed jobs and the jobs that are taking longer than uh, other, other jobs. So nothing uh, too surprising here, but uh, the, the point here is so you, you only uh, literally need to install a set pass, write make file, and run it in order to get this kind of results. So um, you might wonder why uh, I chose uh, make uh, uh, as a workflow description language. But um, it, it, it seems uh, pretty uh, obvious to many people that uh, make is useful for uh, writing workflows, not, not just compilation. Um, but uh, so the, the way I like to put this is uh, it's very straight uh, to the point. So in order to produce a, uh, some files based on some other files, uh, if you like to execute this. So this is basically the only thing you, you need to write, not, nothing uh, else, uh, nothing uh, complicated to, in order to adapt yourself to a particular framework. So uh, it also has a large uh, user and installation base. So <coughs> systems are very, uh, uh, already installed uh, virtually uh, almost everywhere. So uh, we don't have to uh, ask the user to install a uh, large, large uh, tool base. And I don't have to explain how, how this can be done in a particular system. And and some, some other uh, work, pro, uh, work pro description language actually make, uh, allows you to uh, write uh, work pros a little bit more declaratively, basically because it is <coughs> data centric. So you basically describe uh, what you uh, end up with, uh, what you like to uh, have uh, in, the end, in the end, not uh, what uh, you need to execute, what the system needs to execute. So, the same make file uh, can be 
used in, in, in multiple situations uh, in which you may uh, have no data at all or you may have some uh, partial results already. So, so the single may uh, always uh, does uh, the rest of the things uh, that needs to be done. And it, uh, related to that, uh, it has a very easy to understand uh, notion of uh, fault tolerance, which basically means that uh, it, it is, it, if it is somehow suspended uh, or stopped uh, in, in, during the execution, just uh, running the same maker again basically does the uh, rest of the things uh, that needs to uh, have happened. Um, some, uh, something I, I should mention is that actually make has so many uh, powerful idioms uh, for writing uh, workflows uh, that consist of many tasks. So th these things are already uh, in, in, in regular standard um, we make, but uh, not, nothing I have invented. But um, but probably many people even experienced uh, with make uh, do not uh, know uh, there are so many uh, powerful things. Of course, there are so many limitations. Uh, syntax is uh, getting ugly uh, if, uh, if, if, if it is going to uh, become a bit complex and large complex. <coughs> And actually, there, there's a way, but uh, very, uh, which is very tricky, uh, to write uh, DAX uh, that can only be uh, in the middle of the execution. So basically, uh, in most of the time, <coughs> you, you can only write a DAG uh, whose entire shape is uh, known at the beginning of the execution. But uh, in, in general, so uh, I, I do not claim that maybe it's uh, um, in any any means uh, ideal uh, ultimate manage for our for execution, but uh, it's a very good trade of between simplicity and some other things. So uh, I will not uh, get into details of it, but um, actually make is uh, probably uh, more powerful than uh, you, you think. So, so there are so many features uh, that are actually not uh, commonly used, but uh, already available in the new make that make uh, it a very powerful uh, language for uh, writing uh, large workflows. So, so one example uh, I have already shown in, in the demo, so it, which is basically a uh, pattern rules uh, for uh, instantiating uh, many, many uh, jobs. So uh, this paper actually describes uh, so, so many uh, common idioms can be ex expressive in make files like uh, parameter zip jobs, uh, file based parallelism, split and merge and uh, buffets. So um, here's uh, how its performance uh, uh, as of today looks like. So uh, it, it is uh, nothing useful uh, as a scientific viewpoint, but uh, it is a simple small test to stress the dispatcher, that's a job dispatcher. So <clears throat> the test actually uh, dispatches uh, one million uh, tasks uh, each. That's nothing. Uh, dispatcher note uh, looks something like this. Um, actually, uh, we uh, emulated uh, something like 10,000 uh, workers. So, so 10,000 uh, maximum concurrency, which is uh, emulated uh, by something like 400 nodes. So, so this is uh, uh, actually a time series uh, of um, elapsed time from the beginning uh, versus uh, the number of tasks that have been completed. So, so in the end, uh, we have completed one million jobs, so which have been, uh, which was completed uh, in something like uh, 16,000 uh, seconds, which basically means uh, the loop is something like uh, 60 tasks per uh, second. But it, it is not super fast, but uh, it is uh, compared to one of the uh, reported, uh, fastest uh, reported results so far. But uh, actually work is uh, ongoing uh, to improve this uh, So uh, this, this is basically the reason why the throughput is limited, uh, limited uh, in, uh, as of today with something like uh, 60 uh, tasks per second. But basically, so I, I do not go into details, but uh, basically, lots of things uh, must happen uh, in, in the dispatcher you know, node, like uh, process creation and some uh, communication uh, between workers and dispatchers. 
some uh, of the experiences uh, so far uh, we have this. Uh, so one, one thing is uh, in, in, in cooperation with uh, Professor Tsuji uh, in the University of Tokyo, uh, we have uh, parsing lots of uh, biomedical text and incidental ex extraction, so quite similar to the previous features. So uh, we uh, process something like uh, 72 million uh, mainline uh, abstract using uh, so deep uh, NFT parsing uh, for edge. And, and another thing is uh, we uh, also collaborated with the uh, University of Manchester uh, NACTEM, which is basically text mining center. And, and um, our uh, produced results, uh, it is, uh, seems to be used uh, as a semantic search engine operated by uh, NACTEM. So, so it, these two uh, experiences uh, use something like uh, 8,000 uh, concurrency. So 8,000 cores, basically. So uh, another thing is, uh, so I collaborated with uh, Saito San and Moisha Sensei uh, <coughs> about uh, building uh, a UDGB, uh, University of Tokyo uh, genome uh, browser uh, indexing. Uh, so we, we, we process something like 3,000 uh, past Q files, uh, which amounts to something like 300 uh, gigabytes uh, of data. But in, in, in this, uh, basically the, the task is uh, about uh, alignment reads. Uh, so <coughs> we actually uh, take advantage of the component uh, that uh, can uh, run in parallel within a single node. So we only uh, use uh, 500 concurrency, uh, each, each using 15 cores on each <coughs> So uh, the last part is uh, file system, but uh, GMAM, uh, which is a uh, user level file system. But, um, so let me first describe uh, what uh, it is uh, in the US. So GMAM is, is actually a, a little bit an unusual uh, file system that uh, does not try to manage the data by, by themselves. But uh, it, it simply stacks existing uh, file system uh, trees uh, on top of each other to uh, produce uh, the union of these uh, uh, individual tweets and make it uh, globally visible to all uh, participating nodes. So the, the point here is uh, you, we, we, can, we can do this uh, on top of any existing file system, whether it's a local disk or a NFS or a last one. So, so some of the notable features are, uh, so it, it, first of all, it is uh, implemented on top of Fuse, uh, which is uh, in these days, but since very uh, popular in, in uh, at least in Unix communities, which is a building block for developing uh, file systems uh, at the user level. So installation of uh, it uh, does not require root privilege. So, and most of the time, uh, recent Unix uh, distribution uh, simply come uh, with uh, fields already installed. So actually, uh, most of the time, uh, you don't have to uh, ask the administrator to install fields. But uh, assuming that uh, fields is already installed, uh, there's no need to uh, ask the admins. And it, uh, Supports regular uh, POSIX file system API, so you can you can simply run uh, existing binary on, on top of it. So this is uh, unlike uh, some uh, other systems like Hadoop, which basically expose a particular uh, interface that you need to uh, adapt to. Um, for conversations uh, among nodes, uh, the minimum requirement is simply that. Uh, you can reach this node by SSH. So you, you don't uh, have to have uh, anything else to communicate uh, among nodes. But uh, optionally, you can use uh, direct sockets for uh, better uh, boundaries. But uh, the bottom line is you can easily cross uh, administration boundaries. So this uh, tree margin uh, can happen uh, even across administration boundaries. And technically, uh, the most important point it is uh, it is designed so that uh, it pre preserves a uh, locality, uh, both for uh, data I/O and uh, metadata operations. 
So if you are already familiar with uh, SSH file system, uh, it, it is a, a many node version of uh, SSH FS. So, <coughs> so here are some uh, couple of scenarios in which uh, I, I think uh, this kind of tool is useful. So uh, one is um, to aggregate a local storage of uh, individual compute nodes. So these days, um, it, it is becoming typical that uh, compute nodes uh, have uh, local SSDs installed. So we, we can quickly take advantage of uh, these things, uh, not, not just as a local scratch space, but as a shared space for communicating uh, data among tasks of a single workflow. Um, we may uh, have uh, some RAM disks uh, so that uh, to, so as to reduce the uh, uh, actual traffic to write. So, combination of uh, these things, the SSDs or RAM disks, um, using GMount uh, gives you a very uh, good environment for executing data intensive workflows. And of course, uh, it is uh, useful for sharing file systems across uh, administration domains, which uh, are not typically set up by uh, administrators. And uh, it is also useful for uh, instantaneously setting up uh, shared uh, file systems uh, among compute nodes that happen to be allocated to you uh, at that time. So even if uh, the system does not uh, provide any uh, shared file systems uh, for, for the particular nodes, you can, you can uh, <coughs> instantaneously build the file system among them. So here's a, a quick demonstration uh, of Gmount. Uh, okay. So we have uh, 32 nodes. Uh, this is uh, actually uh, Tubametsu, so it's a new supercomputer installed uh, at the uh, Hitech. And each node has a uh, local SSD, which is not shared uh, at all by the uh, shared file system. So we are trying to um, integrate them uh, as a shared file system. So, so we have uh, 32 nodes and all you need to do is um, so all you need to do, to do is to issue a single command that says uh, you like to integrate this uh, local storage into a mount point uh, called this. So the end of result is uh, everybody sees a global image that is a union of this uh, local storage. But uh, of course, uh, at this point, uh, it is empty. And, and quick um, benchmark uh, of writing lots of data uh, concurrently into uh, this mount point. So simple uh, DB command line, uh, giving uh, different file names to uh, each node. So 32 nodes concurrently writing uh, something like uh, one gigabyte, and each getting um, a reasonable performance as a local SSD uh, like um, performance. So the total is something like 200 meg times uh, 30, uh, 32 nodes, which is something like 60, 60 gigabytes already. So this is a very economical <coughs> way of uh, getting uh, good bandwidth. So next is uh, read, but uh, this time uh, read is totally local. So you, you expect uh, actually very good performance. Uh, actually you are not like uh, reading from uh, disks. You are simply reading from caches. So this is Local read, uh, which is uh, finishes uh, in the But uh, this time, uh, actually, uh, you are reading from next node. So, a lot of uh, remote uh, communication uh, is going to take place. So, actually, uh, this complicated expression says uh, you should be from uh, next node. But uh, still, um, 
each uh, gets something like uh, 300 megs or 400 megs. So in, in total, you have something like um, 10 gigabytes and read bandwidth. So actually, uh, the demo is going to compare this with uh, expensive uh, installation of raster file systems, but uh, I, I like to skip this. But the summary is uh, this result is quite similar to uh, what you achieve by a raster file system. But uh, if you uh, compare uh, the amount of investment you need to make in order to make this kind of things to happen, uh, it, it is very cheap uh, investment. And of course, uh, the performance is uh, much, much it will interrupt with the cache. So when a synchronization of the cache data occurs? Uh, it, so, so actually, you can, you can uh, parameterize it. But um, in this particular uh, demo, um, it, it uh, happens uh, in the usual way of file uh, systems, like writing uh, data lazily uh, at some point, so several seconds later or something. <coughs> so in, in order to position this work uh, in, in the context of um, some other traditional uh, parallel file systems, uh, let, let me uh, explain uh, part of uh, how traditional parallel file systems uh, look like actually. So, parallel file, uh, so by traditional parallel file systems, uh, I mean something like Lasta or uh, IBM GDFS. So basically, um, they have uh, separate uh, data nodes, uh, which are totally different from uh, where computation uh, takes place. Um, there is some uh, metadata uh, manager that keeps track of the location of uh, each file. And disks are uh, uh, attached to only uh, data nodes and not uh, compute nodes. And because our computation uh, takes place uh, somewhere different from uh, where the disks are, uh, uh, there needs to be, uh, always need to be a communication between uh, compute nodes uh, and data nodes, even if the data this guy is accessing, accessing to uh, was uh, previously written by uh, itself. So the, the conclusion is it needs a very uh, powerful interconnect uh, between data nodes and, and clients. And another uh, problem is uh, when uh, your uh, compute demands uh, or data demand uh, later grows, so you, you have uh, more clients. Uh, I, in theory, you need to uh, extend servers as well, but uh, practically uh, it is often uh, difficult to make uh, disks, uh, servers, uh, <coughs> networks equally uh, scale to, uh, to compute nodes. So uh, one uh, idea that is uh, getting uh, popular and popular these days is uh, something uh, called compute disk uh, collocation. Uh, the, the idea is very simple. So it simply runs computation uh, on uh, the node that has disks. So, so in, in, a, in a way, um, it, it simply unifies the role of the data nodes and compute nodes uh, in, a, in a single uniform uh, compilation. So, so it, it simply uh, assumes that uh, most of the time uh, you, you, can, you can run computation uh, on the node that uh, already has the data you want to uh, access. Uh, so in, in, in other words, there are a lot of uh, data locally. But, um, so one thing that it is still a problem is a single uh, metadata server that uh, keeps track of uh, the location of all, all, all this data. So, <coughs> so here's a, a, a problem of a single metadata server. Uh, so first of all, it limits uh, scalability because um, all operations like open or create or create directory or uh, remove directory must go through a single uh, metadata server, so which is clearly a uh, photo. But uh, another important uh, thing is, uh, especially when uh, we uh, work uh, across multiple uh, physically distributed uh, sites, uh, this uh, single metadata server architecture uh, forces you to talk to uh, possibly very remote uh, metadata server in order to access uh, data that is actually uh, very close to it. So this uh, having a single metadata server for managing uh, everything uh, is not going to work well uh, in the context of uh, multiple uh, physical resources. 
So Gmount uh, approach um, in, in Gmount approach actually um, actually uh, takes the idea of uh, taking advantage of locality one step further, uh, also for metadata uh, management and operations. So, so in, in the Gmount approach, actually there is no dedicated uh, metadata servers. So actually each node uh, knows uh, what it it has. And the, the, the client uh, that wants to access uh, some data uh, instead, so in, instead of asking uh, the single metadata server that does know everything, it basically uh, starts searching its, its closed nodes and gradually going uh, further. So if uh, data access is uh, mostly uh, local, uh, you, you can quickly find uh, you can quickly find the location of uh, the data you want to access. Uh, in, the, in the best case, uh, without ever asking to help anybody else. But of course, uh, there are no locality uh, of uh, data accesses. Uh, actually, you're going to suffer uh, of uh, making lots of uh, queries that day. So uh, a little bit about uh, GMAM uh, implementations. Uh, actually, uh, uh, it, it is built on a very simple uh, building blocks, which is a slight extension of uh, SSH file system if you are already familiar with it. So, <coughs> um, so we, we have created some, something like SSH, uh, something called SSHFSM, which stands for SSHFS uh, Max, uh, stands, stands, standing for Multiplex. So uh, what uh, it does basically is uh, given several target directories and a single mount point. Uh, it makes uh, this uh, single mount point look like a union of, of all these three uh, directories. And you can, you can uh, download the code uh, for this uh, too uh, from here. So <coughs> it is, uh, like I said, it is implemented uh, as a Fuse program. So actually Fuse, um, uh, calls uh, that the callback function you define uh, whenever some access is occurred under uh, the mount point you specify. So you can you can intercept uh, the event uh, in which uh, clients access a particular directories uh, under this uh, mount point, and you, you can you can know what kind of system calls uh, call. So. So what you need to do to implement a particular uh, file system on top of Fuse is just uh, write uh, these uh, callback functions appropriately. So for example, in, in the case of a regular SSH uh, FS, it simply uh, forwards uh, these requests to a uh, uh, server. So in, in the case of SSH FS Max, uh, basically um, it first asks uh, the uh, first um, target directory, the second and third and so on. So, so it is indeed a very simple extension to, to the uh, already widely, widely used SSHFS. So the, the, the only difference being that uh, you can, you can uh, target multiple directories uh, into a single map operation. And uh, in, in order to uh, actually implement a global file system uh, in which every node uh, actually sees the same uh, directory image, uh, you could naively uh, realize this by uh, letting everybody uh, does the same thing. So, so by letting everybody uh, mounting uh, every other node uh, into a single uh, point. But uh, this uh, clearly won't scale to many nodes. Um, so uh, Donna uh, developed a very clever uh, hierarchical mount mounting scheme in which uh, we can we can avoid this uh, uh, scheme that does not scale. So for details, you can you can check this paper. So some uh, performance uh, results uh, just to uh, highlight the difference between regular file systems and uh, G mount. So this is a, a metadata uh, operation throughput, like uh, access, open, due time, and change mode. For uh, regular file systems, parallel file systems that uh, employ uh, 
single metadata server. So that the point here is that the x axis uh, is the varying amount of uh, access locality. Basically, uh, with uh, 0 0.8, uh, which means 80% uh, of the access access is uh, going to in your local cluster. But uh, even if you uh, vary the uh, locality, uh, the, the performance uh, is actually a constant, which uh, basically means that uh, if your data, uh, metadata server and uh, accessing clients are actually uh, very far from to, uh, each other, you uh, always uh, suffer from uh, bad performance. <coughs> so so in, in the case of uh, GMA, uh, actually that the performance uh, differs significantly when you change the uh, uh, ratio of the local accesses. Uh, in, in this particular configuration, uh, in, in, uh, if uh, the access locality is beyond something like uh, 60 or 70 percent, uh, it outperforms uh, some other traditional uh, file system performance. So, uh, let me summarize this. Um, so, GXP, uh, I talked about GXP and GMAM. Uh, they, they basically together provide a workflow environment, uh, which is very close to what you, you usually have uh, within, within a single node, which is basically parallel main and uh, regular POSIX based uh, file system. And it works uh, nicely at a practical scale. Uh, several hundreds nodes or uh, something like 10,000 concurrency. So the, the work is uh, actually um, still a uh, lot of work uh, uh, in progress. So, But uh, because of its their simplicity, uh, I, I hope it them to be a uh, good in ingredient for further uh, system development researches. So that's my opinion.